Let me just say, check this in. Test, test. Done. Good. All right. Meeting call to order, please rise. And salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and all justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of our troops, our police officers, our first responders, and our firefighters. Thank you. Sunshine notice, please. Thank you, Karen. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilman Yago. Here. Councilman Harris. Here. Councilman Aby. Here. Councilman Russo. Here. Councilman Chirgo. Here. Councilwoman Frank. Here. Okay, thank you. Everyone's here. Uh, let's skip over to the Treasurer's Report. The Treasurer's Report indicated we start out with cash on hand as January 31st, 2024, in the amount of $8,746,480.63. Okay, thank you. Um, the mayor's report, we're, we're going to uh, use that tonight to uh, hopefully satisfy everyone here. Uh, tonight, we're going to, we're here to honor Tom McGill. I thank you all for coming to see Tom tonight. Um, he must really plow Lake Reality very good when he was there. So uh, Tom is, uh, Tom's been one of our maintainers here in, in Kinlon for 37 years. So I'm sure he's been up in Lake Reality and I do appreciate you all came here for him tonight. So, so Tom, we ask you to come up front here and Patty. <laughs> Mr. Tom, I just wanted to say thank you for 37 years of uh, amazing work, of watching you ride your bicycle to work, because I know you live in Kitalon. Ride your bicycle to work. I'm going to miss your pictures on Facebook of what a snowstorm looks like at 2 o'clock in the morning, because none of us know. Um, <laughs> but uh, you really, in, in all honesty, you're just a true honor to be up here with you. We, we brought you this, the council and myself, uh, brought you this beautiful gold $40,000 watch. <laughs> <laughs> And it's uh, hopefully it's just a token of our appreciation to tell you how much you mean to our town. Awesome, <laughs> you really do, and, and and I thank you. I know everyone here as well wants to thank you. about every snowstorm, sandy storm, everything you've been through, <coughs> sitting home alone while you're allowing him to come here and take care of that's us. That's very sweet. So Thank you. I appreciate that. That's Thank just you. a small token of our Tom, we also put you on uh, our Hometown Heroes, which uh, is a great thing. Uh, we've got you on there. I had the pleasure of plowing with you back in the day when I used to plow for a town. And I always enjoyed plowing with guys that knew what they were doing. Uh, it makes, makes the night go so much easier. Thank you. So. Thank you so, for everything. Really. So, and now we'll bring your boys up. Are they are they here? They want to come on up? I got a group there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> here, hold that for you. 
I wrote 37 on the box. Oh, you forget, sweet. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was more for me than you. You tell them we only made the down payment on the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim, is this a bad time to tell them taxes are coming? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> He's lived there long enough. He knows. <laughs> I would just like to say thank you, Tom. Thank you, John. Tom and I, we both started, uh, Tom started in December of 1986. I started in 1987. So we've been together for 37 plus years. Um, we became very good friends um, from day one. And, you know, we've spent our whole entire career together. When you think about it, um, I was thinking about it the other day that we've probably spent more time together than we have spent with our spouses. <laughs> <laughs> now Tom has time to spend with his spouse. Uh, hopefully soon I'll have time to spend with my spouse. Uh, uh, you know, so um, Tom, you're you're um, a pleasure, and you've been. Uh, one of the best employees I've ever seen um, that I've been with throughout the years. And I thank Patty for all the support that she's given you to be with us. We've been out on Christmas, we've been out on New Year's Eve, we've been out on all the holidays while everyone else is sitting home watching the snowfall and, you know, uh, or a tree falling down through Sandy, through all the hurricanes. We've been out for days, and um, you know, Patty's been there, you know, by his side, and always been there. And I appreciate everything you've done, and I believe everybody in the borough of Kenmore appreciates everything you've done. And you're always welcome with us. You're part of Kenmore. And I know that you already have uh, your uh, retirement plan because you're already taking off everywhere, and we can't find you. Where's the man out? Look at the kayak. He's gone. Yeah. So I love you, Tom. And you know what? It has been a pleasure for the last 37 years plus. On behalf of uh, Public Works Senior 2275A, I just want to thank you for your service and for the borough of Kenilon. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. And just a small token of our appreciation. I'll be using that in the yard. <laughs> <laughs>
for most of my career, my plow route, one of the sections was Lakeview. <laughs> I hope I didn't take down too many mailboxes. <laughs> I'm going to dig up lawns. We, we've all done it. I've taken over that route now, so, <laughs> so I, I'm going to retire soon. So we're going to get to one of these guys. I, I need to thank my beautiful wife. She's put up with so much of my stubbornness and uh, just a lot of working, a lot of hours. You come home cranky. And she's given me advice through my whole life that I never could have made it without you. said, I didn't know him growing up, but started with him 37 years ago. We were together, going out, having fun. Um, then he became the boss, and it's just been great to have someone as a boss. I can talk to this guy absolutely about anything. Most people don't have that type of I mean, I might come in on a rotten day, have an argument with him. People would look at us like, he's going to get canned today. <laughs> Two hours later, John, man, I'm just not with it. It, it just, I was, I was blessed. And to be part of the team of great, great work. Amen. I did a lot of the mechanical work. I never had any real formal training, and I just had a bunch of guys. I, I picked something, and I hope it stays together for you. So I, hope I, got this. I hope the weld holds, and they always did. I couldn't have done it. You're, you're part of a team here. It's not individualism, and I had the greatest all-star team for 37 years somebody could ask for. So, so. everyone here has treated me great. So, thank you all, and well, thank you all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So, ending with that, I'm going to give you one short story. Oh, no. uh -oh. I'm going to give you one short story. When Tom and I were young and we first met, we used to go out all the time and hang out and raise a little, you know, cane. Hell, let's say. <laughs> and uh, we were at a place called Conrad's, and uh, we had a little bit of a scuffle going on with uh, because we used to all hang out together. All the PBW guys used to go out together at night. And in the middle of the scuffle, I said to one of my, you know, other employees, I'm like, "Where's Tom?" And Tom always rode a motorcycle, and they're like. Tom went outside to go move his motorcycle because he thought the fight was going to go outside. <laughs> he didn't want his motorcycle to get knocked over. So, but he did come back. <laughs> but he wanted to move his motorcycle first. I have to add a little. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we don't want to keep you guys all night long. But we can tell stories all night long. Your rebuttal, Evan? Was having no problem. <laughs> you know, like okay, I'm not going to get into detail. Like she took your business. The other guy was on the losing. <laughs> they wanted to see that. I was like, John's got this. Uh, Let me get my motorcycle out. I'm, like, I'm not the greatest guy to have help out in a fight. So. <laughs> but we had fun with it, and we had fun for a, a, long, a, for time. a, a long, long time. Okay, so. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Trust me, it's be pretty boring, so if you want to leave with John, <laughs> Tom. <laughs> All right, as far as the mayor's report, we're going to move on to Lake Reality. Um, I guess we're going to do it as uh, hearing from the public. Um, the council will uh, formally vote on it later on it, uh, in tonight under 
uh, what is it, old business, which is number 13 on the agenda. Correct? correct? Yeah, C. Yes, C on 13. So right now I'll open it up to the public. If anybody, uh, I'm also going to have to limit it tonight to at least five minutes maximum. And if you hear somebody else is, uh, you know, saying the same thing you want to say, they'll hear it up here. You don't have to come up in multiples to, to get your point across, but you're allowed. Um, I'm sorry. This is uh, Lake Reality. I'm opening up the floor to anyone from Lake Reality who wants us. Not necessarily from Lake Reality, but if you want to talk about Lake Reality. Nothing specific. Nothing specific at this point. Well, the Orton, they can no, talk I'm about. Not, that's what I'm What's going on? We're trying to. Uh, there's a lot of people here. We're trying to get them all heard tonight before we vote on that ordinance. Membership in this private beach is voluntary. 
Our petition claims that the Lake Reality Beach Club Dam Committee developed their plan with no lakefront property owner participation. The Lake Reality Dam Committee consists of four people, Ben Sapinski, Robert Phillips, Cliff G. Antonio, and Bob Elia. None of these four members are lakefront property owners. Mr. Sapinski and Mr. Phillips are officers in the corporation holding the titles of president and treasurer, respectively. Both of these corporate officers are what the Lake Reality Beach Club calls associate members. Associate members are not residents of Arbor Estates. They live in other parts of Kenlon and are excluded from all costs imposed by Ordinance 03-2024. These two corporate officers are developing policy that imposes a punishing financial burden on our families without any financial burden on their families. They have no skin in the game. Mr. Giantonio and Mr. Elia represent the other half of the dam committee. They are residents of Arbor Estates, and this ordinance would impose a financial burden on their families of $174 per year. This amount is 1 18th the amount the signatories of the petition are being forced to pay. This proportion is absurd. The exclusion of lakefront property owners by the dam committee members is, is an example of taxation without representation, reminiscent of the injustices that sparked our nation's revolution. Our petition states, the Lake Reality Corporation plan imposes an extraordinary and disproportionate burden on nine families. In their March 14, 2024 email to this council, to the mayor, and to its members, the dam committee stated, we have answered every question put to us, and, quote, we have never held back. Let us see if these claims hold true. For those that are unaware, officers of the Lake Reality Beach Club held a meeting with residents on January 30th in this courtroom, where they introduced their plan to charge nine Kinalon families 70% of the cost to replace their dam by imposing 20-year liens on the properties. Unfortunately, I was not invited by the Beach Club to the January 30th meeting. I learned of this critically important meeting from a neighbor on the morning of January 30th, but I was not alone. Other property owners were also not invited. I did not understand at the time how this happened, but my investigation uncovered the facts. After attending the Tuesday, January 30th meeting and learning of the punishing penalties on lakefront properties proposed by the Beach Club, the next day, Wednesday, January 31st, I sent an email to the, form, the four dam committee members requesting two things. A copy of the dam reconstruction engineering report and a question. What is the process for correcting errors in their appraisal? I received no answer on Wednesday the 31st. I reset my request on Thursday, February 1st and received a reply from the Lake Reality Beach Club President Ben Supinski who wrote, Thank you for coming to our January 30th meeting. Upon receipt of his non-answer, I reset my request and received no further response on February 1st. On Friday, February 2nd, I again resent my questions to the dam committee members, to which Cliff G. Antonio replied, there are no errors in the appraisal. I resent my request again Friday evening and Saturday morning and received no response. Would anyone on the council like to see this email evidence? With no answers and no cooperation from the officers of the Lake Reality Beach Club, I was left with no choice but to seek answers to my questions from the town. On Monday, February 5th, I submitted an Open Records Act request with the Kinalon Borough Clerk to get all communication between Kinalon Borough and the Lake Reality Corporation relating to the dam reconstruction project. State law provides municipalities seven business days to deliver the documents. On the seventh business day, Wednesday, February 14th, I visited the Kinalon Borough Clerk to get the documents and was told that there were no documents. And by order of the Borough Attorney, they would not be available for two more weeks. <coughs> Kinalon Borough Council Administrator Tom Carroll was in attendance that day. I returned to meet with the Borough Clerk on Monday, February 26th, and although I did, did not receive all of the documents that were lawfully requested, I did receive three months of email correspondence between the town and officers of Lake Reality Beach Club, and a copy of the Lake Reality funded appraisal, which I already had. 
It took longer than it should have, but at the end of February, I now have the email evidence I needed to explain why I and other property owners were not invited to the January 30th Dam Committee meeting. An email from Lake Reality Beach Club President Ben Sapinski to Mayor Frieda reveals that someone from the Lake Reality Beach Club deliberately created an email distribution list for the January 30th meeting that limited the quantity of email addresses to one per property. My email address was not included in this restricted list. Any reasonable person would conclude that this was done to suppress communication and minimize meeting attendance. This is a great example of the dam committee acting in bad faith as cited in our petition. Has this council asked the Lake Reality Beach Club officers to explain why they restricted meeting communication to the affected families? Would anyone from the council like to see this email evidence? Assuming you're the, the spokesman for the seven families, correct? So I'm giving you more time. Thank you. Okay. The appraisal used to create the assessment in ordinance 032024 is flawed. Properties that benefit from the lake are excluded from this ordinance. One example is the taste of reality property owned by Mayor Frieda's family. In an email from Borough Administrator Tom Carroll, sent Tuesday, December 12, 2023, to the Dam Committee and Mayor Frieda, Mr. Carroll stated, quote, I am writing up the narrative for the council to present the plan Thursday night. One hour later, Lake Reality Beach Club Treasurer Robert Phillips replied to Tom Carroll with, quote, I'll be sending over a schedule with assessment numbers I drafted later today. This email raises several questions. Number one, is it normal in Kinlon to receive tax assessment proposals from corporations? Was Mr. Phillips' assessment proposal included in Mr. Carroll's narrative to the council? Was Mr. Phillips' assessment proposal used to develop tax policy in Kinlon? Would anyone on the council like to see this email evidence? As revealing as these emails are, there are still many emails that were not revealed. There was one more artifact delivered to me in my open records request to Kittelon Borough. It is a summary of 41 email messages from Kittelon Borough staff and elected officials that were not shared with me. I was told by the Borough Clerk that these 41 emails were protected by attorney-client privilege. 41 emails over a period of three months is a large quantity. The 41st email in this list is from Tom Carroll and was sent to the, dam, the Lake Reality Dam Committee members and the mayor on February 14, 2024. You may recall this is the same day I visited Mr. Carroll and the borough clerk at the borough hall to collect documents. Of the 41 restricted emails, this is the only one sent to the Lake Reality Dam Committee members. Would anyone on the council like to see the list of 41 restricted emails? I have a, a question for an attorney on that. Um, am I entitled to see those emails? Yes. As a member? Okay. Could, I, could you provide me with those 40 sure. emails? Thank you. I'd also advise the mayor and council that uh, this gentleman has filed a complaint with the Government Records Council, so I would request that you not discuss you know, the process. Our petition makes the following claims. The Lake Reality Corporation has been collecting a dam fund fee from members for over 20 years but refuses to share evidence of the dam fund account balance or evidence of the dam fund disbursements to members. The Lake Reality Board refuses to provide annual financial statements to its members. To 
remedy these concerns, the signatories of the petition are calling on the town to perform a financial audit of the Lake Reality Homeowners Association Inc. books. I talked to you about the petition, and I have provided evidence of how the officers of the Lake Reality Corporation have corrupted the dam restoration project. I'd like to now focus on the ordinance. First, allow me to dispel some rumors. The conversation with the Dam Safety Bureau Chief at the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, I learned the following. There is no urgency from the DEP or the state of New Jersey requiring this council to move quickly to replace the Lake Reality Dam. There is no risk of the loan being withdrawn as long as the town continues to make progress. There is no risk that the money appropriated in 2019 will be reallocated to other DEP loans. It is locked in at 2% interest. While it is important to get the dam restoration project done, there is no reason coming from the state to sacrifice quality for speed. A question for this council. Why was ordinance 032024 not visible on the Kinlon Borough website? It on, was it on the site, Karen? Zero three two zero two four. Don't don't we post them for the public to see when they're introduced? But they're available here for the public. But they're available here for the public. At no cost. Okay. But if somebody wasn't at the meeting and wanted to just see what the borough was doing and what the ordinance is, they wouldn't be able to go onto the borough website and see what's there's been introduced. No, uh, there's no spot to put the introduced what the ordinance is on our website. I don't. Let me ask you, Brian. Is there any requirement as far as how you post it or where you post it or? I mean, from a convenience standpoint, I can't understand why it would be on there. The requirement is that meetings and the agenda of those meetings be posted to the extent known. The problem with regular meetings is that we post them at the beginning of the year, all the regular meetings, and obviously we don't know what the agenda is going to be for each of those. There is no separate requirement that everything that's going to be acted on be posted at any certain point before the meeting. Not even just ordinances? Is no. there any requirement that ordinances are sent to newspapers or anything like that? No. For the benefit of those that are in attendance and listening to the recorded audio, I'm going to read a portion of the ordinance 032024. Quote, the full cost of the principal interest and any associated costs, fees, or penalties expended to complete the improvements and repairs of the Lake Reality Dam to the satisfaction of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, together with all costs associated with establishing and enforcing the assessments, shall be assessed against all benefiting properties as listed in the chart attached here to as Schedule A. So, no financial responsibility on the town and no financial responsibility on the Lake Reality corporate entity. All costs, regardless of the reason, are passed on to the property owners and allocated using the percentages in Schedule A. Question, was the assessment proposal submitted by Lake Reality corporate treasurer Robert Phillips Borough Administrator Tom Carroll on Tuesday, December 12, 2023, used to develop Schedule A. Yeah, yes, yes. What I do not see in this ordinance is any language requiring the Lake Reality corporate entity to exhaust the proceeds of their dam fund on dam reconstruction expenses prior to drawing funds from the loan. Should this not be re required in the ordinance? No. Because if you expunge all your capital and you run into a snag when you're building something like that, which I'm very experienced at, you have no reserve. Where are you going to get the money from? You're never going to be able to complete it. So that's one area where my personal feeling is you guys should keep some in reserve. And if you go through the project and it doesn't cost as much, you don't expunge all that, you'll have that money to 
pay down the loan afterwards. But if you spend that money now, you're going to have no reserve. You're not going to be able to come to us and say, hey, help us out. Can you help us finish the dam? No. So uh, depleting your bank account on a project like this, my personal recommendation is I would never do that. But it's supposed to be a separate fund. It's a dam fund designed for this one purpose. Yeah, I understand. I, I don't get in the middle of all that. I, I okay. I'm just giving my two cents worth on why I would think you guys should. That money, money would, that money would still be used towards a dam just exactly. if there's an overage. It's, or the end. it's a buffer. It's a reserve. And, you know, if you don't use your reserve, you can pay it off to the loan after, after you do your construction. And if I could just interject, this project is not slated to go beyond the end of this year. So you'll know by the end of this year what the uh, financial encumbrance is and how much that you have in reserve and when that can be put into use. The corporation would know that, I'm sure. If they haven't been forthcoming with their financial information. That's something that you have to resolve yourself. Understood. Clause 3 in Ordinance 032024 reads, The Borough's Special Assessment Commission, with the Borough's appointed CFO acting as an ex officio member, shall be responsible for establishing the assessment in accordance with the statutory procedures. This raises some questions for this Council. First, it's my understanding that the Assessment Commission is created by ordinance. What's this done? The Mayor and Council as a whole acted as the Commission. The mayor and council as a whole acted as the commission. Okay. But it wasn't created by ordinance. Only through this ordinance. There was no separate commission created by ordinance. Okay, thank you. Who besides the borough CFO is a member of this commission, and why were no Arbor Estates lakefront property owners included in this commission? As I said, it's the council as a whole is the commission. Set up a commission. You're saying no, that just by our actions, uh, correct? Our commission. Correct. Okay. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, for letting me speak to you tonight. I'll finish my comments by offering to you two options to resolve the Lake Reality Dam to the benefit of everyone in Kenlock. Option one: Although the Lake Reality Beach Club has been chasing this dam restoration issue for many years, the current process started with an email from Mayor Frieda introducing Tom Carroll to the Dam Committee members on November 17, 2023. After four months of effort, this process produced the following outcomes. Number one, the appraisal is wrong. It never established a benefit boundary because the Lake Reality Association corrupted the process. Number two, the proportions of benefit in the appraisal are fundamentally wrong. Number three, the town failed to follow the law because you did not appoint a special <coughs> assessment commission properly. Number four, you did not meet your obligation with the Open Records Act. Recognize the fact that you have made some mistakes in this process. These mistakes are clear. Fix your mistakes now and start over rather than wasting more taxpayer money. Option two, ignore the obvious fundamental flaws in this process, pass the ordinance tonight, and we will appeal, and we will win. Total cost of this option, tens of thousands of Kinlong taxpayer dollars wasted, the political fallout of losing the appeal, and six to eight months of time before the process starts over again. I suggest option one, but I expect option two. I'm happy to take your questions. Just a question. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand the, the, how things are structured up in, uh, in the uh, Lake Reality or actually, what is it? Uh, Arbor. Arbor Estates. <coughs> you elect the people who are on the board, correct? So the way the bylaws are written for the entity is that um, elections are made from a meeting. It's not a uh, vote across all members, but the the officers of the entity could answer that better than I. 
So my question is, and I don't know if you can answer this, um, members vote or just anybody who looks up there votes? I think it's a question for uh, members of the Wake Valley Corporation. Um, I'm not a member. And have you voted for? I was a member for many years, but uh, we ended our membership at the end of 2022. And I'm just uh, I'm a little confused because the information we've been getting through, uh, through the DAM committee is that everybody's on board, or there's, at one point I think it was six who were on board, two were against, and six couldn't be contacted. I'm a little bit surprised that there's this much pushback. Uh, I'm, not, I'm actually surprised that there was that little pushback actually before this, but um, we were assured that we were voting for something that, that the uh, members of the community were in favor of. Mm -hmm. I have some evidence here that may explain mm -hmm. the answer to that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I want to thank the council for this email. Uh, it, it really points to uh, you working on behalf of, of the Lakefront family of uh, property owners. It says on, uh, this is an email from Thomas Carroll on Thursday, January 4th, to the uh, Lake Reality uh, Dan Committee. And from Tom to Rob, he said, uh, the only question I am getting from the council is, quote, have the nine homeowners who are seeing the highest assessment been contacted and are they in agreement? Please confirm this. Please confirm this has been done and everyone is on board. And you have commitments from the nine homeowners. This was dated January 4th. On that same day, President Ben Sapinski replied with the statement, not one lakefront property owner has communicated any disagreement to the dam committee or our board member with that information. The significance is the date. So although they sent an email with the appraisal on December 12th, the first meeting where they introduced how 70% of the dam reconstruction costs were gonna be spread across nine lakefront families was on January 30th. He's saying we're on board three weeks before that meeting. I, I'm happy to share this evidence with the council. Subsequent to, to uh The announcement or the determination that that was given to us by the state of how these this loan could be approved or how Kinlon uh, could co-sign a loan to help Lake Reality rebuild its dam. Um, were you at any meetings where where the process was explained? Were you at any meeting where Tom Carroll explained that? process of having the town co-sign a loan necessitated uh, the allocation of the assessment based on the value that was added to the properties. Were, were you at any of those meetings? January 30th. Okay. And do you understand what is ne necessary by the, uh, or what is required by the state? I do. Okay. But you disagree with the value that that um, has been put in terms of the, the uh, proportion or the percentage of the added value to the properties. You disagree with that assessment. That's what you're saying, basically? Yes, uh, what I said was that the proportions in the ordinance and from the appraisal are preposterous. It's an 18 to one proportion. But, but that's not, I mean, whatever the, eight, whatever the ratio is, well, you asked me it, to it, yes, but it, in terms of the added value to your property as a lakefront property, as opposed to the added value to a property that is that is not even in view of the lake, and that's how the, the assessment was done. I understand. So, do you understand? You understand that? I do. Okay. So, so you're Randy. Moving forward, yeah. you're now the dam committee. How does this work? You're, you're well, saying hire another appraiser that kind of goes in your favor, so it's less money to you and more to everyone else, or is that the thought process, or is it? 
tell us what, what you think we should do up here. Well, I think that the process needs to start over because the process was corrupt. The uh, appraisal is inaccurate. The proportions are preposterous. And that not all properties that get benefit from the lake are included in the appraisal. The formula that was used to determine value is wrong. It needs to be redone. And in whose opinion is it wrong? Mine. Okay. Your personal opinion. Correct. Okay. And are you, is, is everyone of that opinion? I'm of that opinion. Can you see a show of hands? Are these, are these the nine, are the people clapping the, the nine families that are are most responsible? Is that is that is it is this a situation where the people that are bearing the, the greatest burden they don't want to pay the three thousand whatever a year because their neighbors are paying two hundred or whatever a year and they feel they're being unduly so the nine people that constitute the seventy percent you are the folks that are here protesting this. Is that well, is that essentially it? So the council ever did they want the second time? But we have to wait. We're just we're working with Randy right now. We have to finish with Randy before we move on to everybody. Let me let me answer that question. What was the question? I'm sorry. I just asked you. Is it uh, is it basically the people that are protesting are the nine families that are bearing the seventy percent? There was, no, no, there and, was seven. And, that's not true. No, no, there were seven that signed the petition. Okay. I'm speaking so, my, the so my question to you is: the company we used was a very reputable appraisal company. Okay. The numbers were looked at by our tax assessor. Now, if you're telling me there's something in there that's wrong about your percentage, I would be happy to have you sit with our tax assessor and figure that out. The fact that this is corrupt is is not corrupt. I mean, that's a very valuable company. Our assessor said double thumbs up, great pick. It was nothing where we said, hey, really stick it to these seven people because we would never do that up here. So we use a reputable company, and it, maybe our math is incorrect compared to what you have. I don't know, but we'd be more than happy to sit down and go over that. So I have a question on what you said there. Yes. You said the pronoun you used was we in regard to the appraisal, but my understanding is that the appraisal was funded by the Lake Reality Corporation. There Correct. Was a pre there was another appraisal in August of 2021. Because we wouldn't use we council. wouldn't use Kenilon taxpayers' money to pay for that appraisal. But you did in 2021. That was the that was yeah it was that that was us looking at not Lake Reality Homes. We were comparing a Lake Reality Home versus a Kenilon Home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overall, to, to compare. To see if there was an increase of value of anybody in in uh, Lake Reality versus the rest of the borough. Which it showed that there wasn't any. Yeah, there was no added value. So, but there is an added value. By this assessment, but no, it doesn't because it's a different type of assessment. You mentioned not all property owners on the lake are getting the same assessment. Can you elaborate on that? So the um, there's according to the appraisal, there are nine lakefront property owners. Seven that signed the petition all have the highest uh, financial uh, impact. But there were two uh, Lakefront family properties that had a discounted rate. Is there, was there a significant difference between the, the assessed value of the seven as opposed to the two? Okay, one of them is half the amount, and the other was, I don't know the exact calculation, maybe two thirds or three quarters. Is there any type of differential between the actual size of the lakefront uh, in terms of, or you know, for instance, 100 feet as opposed to 25 feet, or, or is there any, do you have any idea of why it might have been less? Well, you know, Councilman Harris, I think that's a question for the appraising company, because I don't know what calculation or what formula was used to come up with these numbers. So you don't have any pre preconceived idea of why that might have happened? I'm not a property appraiser. Okay. I'm I was just wondering if you had an opinion. I don't know why the, those two properties have a discounted uh, financial burden. I'm, I'm particularly concerned with the uh, with the assurances that this council has been given, you know, prior to the introduction of this ordinance. Um, 
you know, we, we've heard numerous times from our borough administrator and from the representatives from the Lake Reality Association that everybody was on board with this. And now, you know, not only Mr. White here, but almost all of the folks who are getting the wine share of the assessment are not on board. They, there's some disconnect here. I mean, how are we constantly getting these assurances that these folks were, were good with this? And the, the, the question in the email that you brought up is one that, that I was continuously asking for the last year and a half, maybe two years. Are these people good with this? I, I, I'm scratching my head. I'm saying, are these nine folks going to pay 70% of this? And we were constantly told yes. Um, you know, uh, Councilman Yago would, would constantly ask, do we have anything in writing? Have these folks committed anything to paper saying, yeah, I understand, I'm gonna have to pay this, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't get any of that. So, I, I'm at a loss to understand how we kept getting these assurances that these folks were going to pay for this, and now here the city before saying they're not going to pay for it, and they never agreed to. I, Mr. White, um, yes. At the meeting of the 30th, yes. Um, was that meeting that you said that you didn't know that it was happening until the morning of? Yes. Okay. And how were you notified? A neighbor. Did you, did you know this meeting's happening tonight? The morning of. <clears throat> I shared the reason. people, I, I was in attendance at that meeting, and the mayor was there too, and, and the group of people that came, um, the general feeling from what I saw was that it was a fairly positive reception of it. Now, you remember my participation in that meeting, don't you? Yes, and I've seen that you were the only, but wait a minute. Were you there? Yes, I remember okay. you being there as well. Okay, yeah. It was you and the mayor. Okay, and because unfortunately the faces are not that familiar. Um, but but the there was one, there was uh, there were one or two dissenters at the meeting, and I, and I, I remember uh, Tom Pritch was here, and I remember him speaking. I remember someone else standing up and speaking, and I'm assuming that was you. Um, and uh, so one thing I would say. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Is that that night it was introduced? So all of that information that was coming was brand new. Mm -hmm. It was shocking. We didn't know what to make of it because it was the first that we're hearing this. So if there was any lack of protest, it was because we're just getting that information and trying to understand what does this mean. Some folks from the back room did say that they felt that it would. It was unfortunate that nine households were, were receiving a, a, uh, a heavier burden, <clears throat> much heavier burden than the rest, and that that was something in what I heard during that meeting was that it would be something that would be worked out amongst the residents of Lake Reality. Oh, so that now, sounds very good. I, did, I, I didn't know that. That's I can raise okay. my hand, but that was the first of that day last time. Okay. I thought it was unfair. To me, sounds like a wonderful idea, but this is something that you would have to work I, out I amongst agree. yourselves. I agree, but that's what we were saying in the last meeting. But the other thing, too, is we did get this email before that meeting. So if you didn't get the email because someone else in your household got it, we did get the email that had this mm -hmm. assessment. So it, it did come out ahead of time. And if 
if I could just address that point as well, the fact that each household has an email address on it, I know in, in Smoke Rise, there's only one uh, email address that gets information from the, the Smoke Rise administration. It's not mine. And I have to go to my wife and say, honey, did we get that email or do you have we gotten any emails or anything like that? And so that burden to some degree is upon us. If we are if we are in communication with an organization, then we need to be aware of that. So Rand, Randy, uh, Randall, I'm sorry, I don't know if you like going. Okay. Uh, uh, so y your suggestion is what? My suggestion is that the process needs to start with a new appraisal of the properties. It's wrong. You, you, were, on you were saying the math was wrong, not the, the appraisal of the properties. Well, there's a formula that's used to calculate the value, and um, that calculation in the current appraisal is preposterous. And how do you know that? An 18 to 1 ratio. Oh, let me ask you, has anyone done any work to um, compare an 18 to 1 ratio in Kinalon compared to other lakes? Let me just make a statement. 18 to 1 to me sounds ludicrous because if that was the case, then a lakefront property should be paying 18 times the taxes as a non lakefront. And that would be the Mayor, I think, it's, I think it's really important that we give everybody an opportunity here sure. tonight because you, you did speak a, a good amount. I think you did very good, but I do think um, we could probably go back and forth, but I, I'm sure there's other people that want to be heard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else from the public? And now we're going to limit it to five minutes, please. So good. Good. Hi, Ed. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, just, just, just say. What's your suit at that? Yes, yeah, the chair. Or you could stand. No, no cameras today? There's a camera behind. Camera behind. Turn. Hi, Kinalon. <laughs> well, you know, if the camera's there, I think people should sit over here. Well, you got to. You're, address, you're addressing us, not the crowd. I will. <laughs> So um, this is going to be really quick. It's pertaining to the open session of the meetings. The open session of the meetings is in the beginning. This was quite a discussion. We have agenda items, quite a few agenda items, lots of discussions, old business, new business. There's a lot of things to talk about. So the open session is in the beginning of the meeting. Would the council consider changing it to the end of the meetings? And if it was at the end of the meeting, we would have voted for everything and we wouldn't be able to hear your comments. Uh, I don't know about that. Because I'd love to hear your comments because it might affect the agenda. That's why we do it first. And there's an open portion on when we read the ordinance as well. Yes. Okay. I, I, just, I, I did this I, tonight I, as a courtesy to no, Lake Rail. Okay. I just think at the end of the meetings, the open portion would be better because the, the citizens would have a chance to digest what's going on in the meetings and then have a chance to respond. Okay. So I'd like the council to consider that. Okay. Thank you. Chris? Good, Chris. Just yeah, you don't have to say your address. Just Christopher Kelly. Um, right off the bat, they're, they're saying that the guy who lives on the lake pays eighteen times more. So he eighteen times more. So a house on a lake is worth. 18 times more than the house across the street? No, that's not what the appraisal was set to, to do. The appraisal determines the increase in value 
based upon the existence of the lake being there. So it's the lakes, the presence of the lake adds more value clearly to the lakefront properties than it does to properties it's that are just to one. That's what the appraiser determined. Okay, that's let's say if, if my property is valued at $100,000 more because I live on the lake and the guy that lives three roads back, the added value to his property is $250. What's the percentage between $250 well, it's not. and $100,000? But it's not. Those, those, are not, those are not real numbers. Well, but words, the numbers that we got other, back suggested words, that that was accurate. This, if you have a house on a lake, it might be worth 10, 20% more than the house that's not on the lake. It's not, a dollar figure. It's not eight compared, it's compared to the amount of the dollar figure that the other house gets. You have to talk but to it's, it, But when they're talking about them paying 18 times more. That's a thousand. Is that if, kind of, am I right? If the added value is up, is 18 times more than the added value to the other properties, then it's not. Pay 18 times a, more. Brian, if, if you're if you're a, if you're li if this thing holds, if we say we're not doing it, and it turns into a snake pit, and I live on a snake pit, the guy across the street, he lives across the street from the snake pit. His property is going down too, but it's not. You can't say that it's worth. That much more. We're not the ones that say the, the, the assessor the same. The appraiser. Uh, and it's not, again, the appraiser, it's sorry. not. They're not. The appraisal doesn't say that a house on the lake is worth 18 times more than a house removed from the lake. The, what the appraisal is supposed to do, according to the Sparta case that went to the Supreme Court, is determine how much of an increase in value is based on the presence of the lake being there for each of the affected properties. So again, if it's you know the, the properties that are distant from it, the increase in value is a few hundred dollars. For the lakefront properties, it's several thousand dollars, according to this appraiser. That's where the numbers came from. Really? So it's not that it, a house on a lake is worth 18 times what a house not on a lake is worth. That is not what the appraisal was scheduled to do. That seems. Uh, that seems. Off. And you know, to say that the generally it seemed positive because the other people are paying a lot less. So one guy's paying 3700 This is why I asked, like, what was actually going on? So one guy's paying 3700 and one guy's paying 200 Is that? 174 174 So the people that are paying 174 which is everybody that's not in the lake, which is everybody but nine, they're happy. But of course they're going to be happy. They're paying 174. The guy that's not going to be happy are the nine people who are getting screwed. You do but see our honest. hands are tight, huh? You do see, based on the assessment and the way the properties are valued, that it's not something that we personally don't care who pays what. And I, I, I don't mean it that way, but, but the, the money, the money is going to come from someplace, right? Okay. And it's up to determine how that money is allocated by the residents. Of Lake Reality. That, that just seems more way out of line. That's actually. Can I, can I just quick, because otherwise they're going to throw me out of here. The second one is this. If they have, it's a good point that Sean made, if they got a couple hundred thousand dollars laying around, yeah. they're going to need it. Are we co signing this loan, this kind of loan? Yes. Okay. So we're going to want to know how much well, they have. No, that's what they're voting on tonight. We, we're not co signing. No, we're not I agree with you. you. They should have a quarter of a million dollars. They should have more than that laying around, right? My person, I don't know exactly. I don't, right. So before we co-sign their loan, how much do they have? That's ridiculous that you wouldn't know that. Ridiculous. Yeah. You've got to know how much, they have. how much do you have for this? Oh, we have something we're not going to tell you. Then we're not going to co-sign your loan. That's the end of that story. But they could have zero. They could have zero, and it's still well. That's, that's a good idea, though, that you brought up. They should have something. Well, what is it? If we're going to co-sign this loan, number three, as Kinalon uh, resident, if we co-sign the loan and they can't pay, hmm. whose lake is it now? Ours. Mm -hmm. It's it becomes a tax lien that the town can enforce, just like any other tax lien. But th does it Kinalon now own a lake? It's, a, it's assessed mm -hmm. against the individual properties. 
So if one property owner doesn't pay, we put a tax lien on that one individual's property to collect the money that they didn't pay. So you're going to put a tax lien on everyone up there? If whoever if they doesn't pay. pay. Yeah. It's only if they default and don't pay. Just like if they don't pay their taxes, we can put a tax lien on the property. So you don't feel that Kinelon is going to end up paying this bill? That's the idea. That's why it has to be done this way with an assessment, a special assessment on the properties. I, I don't have a problem with anything except it sounds like this was done behind a lot of these people's back. Yes. Let's face that. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out because I only learned about this. So somebody's getting screwed and they should have to say something. And I also, I still have a problem with the amount of money between the guy who lives across the street from the lake and the guy who lives on the lake to pay that much more seems ridiculous. Because there are people, like even when I'm in facing lakes, there's people who use the lake, I'm on the lake. There's people who are on the lake that are not on the lake that are using the lake a lot more than that. Your parents hardly never use the lake. There's people who use the lake constantly. So it's not like they're getting less of the lake. It's not true. Everybody gets to use the lake. So I'd say that is off. Now the other question I have, is my five minutes up? Does somebody want to give me five minutes? Hey, I knew I'd get 10 minutes. <laughs> So here's my other question. Is it is it your intention then to raise the taxes on the people who live on the lake? That's not no. part of the ordinance. It's, it's an assessment. It's, it's, it it's a special assessment. It's a, so that's not going to have anything to do with their taxes. It will not be attached. No, it will not be attached to their taxes. It'll be a separate just, bill. The, the numbers don't seem to be real to me. The numbers to me, they should, like my friend Alex, who's across the street from the lake, up a little higher, has a beautiful view of the lake. It seems to me that if you want to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, but to do just the people on the lake and the guy across from the lake who has a beautiful view, he, he, he's You do understand the difference between lake view and no lake view. What's that? Lakeview has a view of the lake. Non-Lakeview doesn't have a view of the lake. I understand that, but there's got to be houses that are across the street from the lake that have a lake. No, no, no. Yes, yes, there are. None? Are. Come on. Come on. There are. There are. Yes. It, it can't be none. And there's, there's actually a graduation in the way the assessment is to be made. I told you. Oh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's no one on lake front now. That's what I'm asking. Is there a, there's no tier limit? Um, that's what I'm asking. There's no tears. There should According be. to this appraiser, there wasn't. There should be. But I still think that you're, the, the people who actually live on the lake, okay. this, this, they're getting through. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't like it. Did you get that fine? No. Right. Didn't get that at all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Cliff? statute, if anybody wants to read it, 
NJSA 58-4-12 that controls how this process is done. No option. And part of that statute says the cost of payment of the principal and interest on a loan shall be assessed in the same manner provided in assessment of local improvements generally, meaning like if you were to put in a new sewer, people in that neighborhood where the sewers would be assessed. So the council has to do it according to that law. And the statute goes on to say, against the real estate benefited thereby in proportion to and not in excess of the benefits conferred. That's what the law requires. So, since that is what the law required, this real estate appraiser was retained. Yes, but they paid for it because no one else did. Um, it was over, I think it was over $20,000 for this report. This wasn't some guy who just drove around the neighborhood and said, uh, all right, you're paying 18% more. No, this is a $20,000 report that was done. Yes, the lake paid for it. We had absolutely no say in how this, this was done. He's a professional. He's got all sorts of certifications. If he lied in this, or did what we kind of went and nodded at him to do, he could lose his license. So I can pretty much guarantee that this is worth the paper it's written on. And this was not our plan. Again, the law requires it. We hired this guy. We were told he's one of the best in the business. I think several members of the borough government were told the same thing. In fact, it was um, sent to the people up in Sparta who said, yeah, this report is perfect. It's done according to the law. This is what's required. Do we all agree that the lakefront is paying a heck of a lot more than everybody else? Yeah. Do we feel you know terrible about that? Absolutely. But this is what the law requires. We're not playing, we're not playing fast and loose. As a side note, I agree with what Mr. White said that the DEP says that as long as we're making progress, we will not lose this money. If this ordinance gets voted down, that's not progress. The money's going to go away. The lake's going to get drained. Have they guaranteed that? No. But that it seems to me that's the interpretation of what's going on. So if the lake runners want to drain the lake, more power to them. They're the one. Maybe it's not 18%. Maybe it's 10% more than the house around. It's 1,800%. The value. Okay. 1,800%. You want to lose that 1,800%? Knock yourself out. Have the lake drain. I'm loaded off the lake. I only lose about 5%. Um, well, maybe that should be an option for the nine people to discuss. I mean, I've never seen any options with this whole program. This, this has been what you guys have brought to us and right. assuring us that everybody's for it. I, I think the nine property owners who are on the lake should I'm be working with you. Well. Yeah. And I think that they should come up with whatever options they say. Maybe, maybe one of the options they want is to drain the lake. And maybe if they come out and say, we're going to drain the lake, then maybe the community comes together as a whole and figures out a way to, to come together mm -hmm. and save the way. But well, isn't that something that isn't that something that you have done over the course of the last ten years? And, and let me if I address your, your point in part if I may counsel me go. We have had numerous meetings about this issue. In the library, here in town hall, with the mayor, without the mayor, with council members, with the borough business administrator, just the lake members up there. Every meeting was always advertised. Come down, hear what's going on. We'll explain it to you. If people didn't show up, frankly, that's on that. Cliff, Not I, I've met but, with you so many times. Right. And we, we've had so many meetings, workshops. We've had regular meetings. We've been discussing this for years and years. And every time I say, bring us something that shows the people are for this. Bring us a piece of paper. Have people fill out and say, we are for this. We're involved in this. We're gonna we're gonna work together and get something done. And I have never, ever seen anything. Councilman Russo has been on the council for several years. I think it's been six and years. You guys been working on it. I think it was six. Yeah, yeah six and, years. And we just and, and every time we get yes, everybody's for it. Everybody's for it. But it turns out that a lot of people had no idea what was even going on. Right. That goes back to my point that. It's willful ignorance if they don't know what's going on. We, as was, as was, as was, as was, as was,
mentioned before, the assessment report was sent out back in December. If Mr. White didn't see it, I don't know why. It was emailed to him. If he chose not to open it and look at it, again, that's on him. I know for, uh, we knew from the beginning that these people were not all going to agree to this. We told them from the beginning, and the late fronters who did participate in the meetings we've had, know all along we've told them they're going to pay substantially more than the people who are not on the lake. It wasn't until we got this appraisal back in December and it was sent out, we said, here are the numbers. If you have a comment or whatever, let us know. We heard nothing. So we had the meeting here, it, right here in this room with, I think it was the mayor and the borough administrator, to have everybody come in and say, look, we've got this appraisal. Does anybody have a problem with it? And Mr. Harris, you, you were asked about this before. There were late fronters here. No one said, this is ridiculous. I don't want to have to pay 18 more. They question the amounts. You just you just said something that I want to repeat. You just said you knew from the beginning that a lot of these late homeowners, homeowners weren't going to be for this. Yet you came year after year and represented to this council that everybody was on board, the majority were on board, that there's no issues. And I kept saying, bring me something, bring me a piece of paper, and you never brought anything. Now you're telling me that from the beginning you knew that people were not going to be on board and that there was going to be resistance. Okay, Councilman, these are not interrogations. Can we please let Cliff just get everything he needs out? I'll this is not question. an interrogation back and forth. One of, the, one of the first times I appeared in front of this council, years ago, when you were asking this exact issue, get something on paper where everyone's going to agree. I said, no one's going to sign a piece of paper saying, yeah, raise my taxes. We tried that. We sent out affidavits to everyone in the neighborhood we, so like, whatever we have, 65 properties, we got like 25 back. And I would talk to people who I knew were in favor of it. I say, hey, you didn't send me that update, did you sign it? I'll send you another copy if you lost it. Yeah, yeah, I'll sign it, I'll get it to you. They never came back. So that's why we never heard people say, absolutely, no, one person, I know a couple in the lake that I said, I don't care how much you're gonna charge, I'm not paying. But the point I made to this council years ago it's how often do you raise taxes here in town where you poll everybody and say, is this okay with you raising taxes? I'm guessing never. Because people aren't going to agree across the board. We told you this 10 years ago. And that's why it's been impossible to get a consensus from these people. I'm not, I'm not disputing the fact that it's upsetting. It's a lot of money. And if I was in their shoes, I'd be raising hell too. But they've had this information all along. And now they're saying, oh, we, we just found out. Please. Guys, guys, you guys didn't interrupt. Sorry. You didn't interrupt. So the fact that I know Mr. White was at the meeting when we were all here, and he did not say, I'm not paying this is ridiculous. The assessment is not worth the paper it's written on. And he has the, the assessment. So let, 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 let me just point out one thing. C Councilman Trero just made the comment that Councilman Yago and I have been at work on this thing for six years. People should understand that we're co-signing a loan. So if you go to a bank and Mr. Giblin wants to borrow money and he says, well, Mr. Russo will co-sign my loan, it means that if Mr. Giblin can't pay, I will pay. We're being asked to co-sign a loan for the Lake Reality Dam. The Lake Reality uh, Homeless Association is a private entity. It's not a years, Councilman, we have been at this because we are trying to protect all of Kimelon. Because if the folks in Lake Reality are not going to pay and we co-sign the loan, guess what? The whole borough is going to pay. That's, that's not true. true. It is no, absolutely true. That's, 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 that's like someone that doesn't pay their taxes. It, the rest of the, it's, no, it's, it's absolutely true. It's not true. We've been going over this for months. Absolutely true. No, you already said that it's not true. All right. Let me, let me address that people have been talking about. We've got a half a million dollars in the bank. Let me, let me just read through. What do I want to read through here? Um, as most of you know, we've been going through this for six years. Um, and um, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. The work we have presented 
to the lake residents and this governing body meets the requirements of the law, plain and simple. And if we ever thought that we get a consensus on it, I would argue that that's unbelievable. Our sole purpose all along was to do what the law requires. We knew we were going to have meetings like this. We knew it was going to come up for a vote to council. And if people were annoyed with the process, they're going to do exactly what they're doing tonight. What would it have benefited us to cut corners? It would. So we did what the law required. We paid for the real estate appraisal, which everyone who has seen it said, who does this work said it's a fantastic process or a fantastic report. And as was mentioned, I forget who. But we did it per the dictates of the Supreme Court, the State Supreme Court, per the Sparta case. With regard to who has to repay the loan, again, the statute is clear. It's paid by those who benefit from it no more than, no less than what they benefit. I didn't write that. The, the Lake didn't have any process in it. There was talk about Mr. Phillips sending emails about assessments and all that. Nothing he says, says can influence your assessment. Your assessment is based on that real estate report. No matter what we say, we can't make side deals. That, that'd be against the law, and we wouldn't get the loan. Now that doesn't mean that uh, people or organization, well, what I have said in the past is only the people within the lake can pay. That's inaccurate. What I should say is only the people within the lake can be assessed by the town. There are opportunities for people to pay voluntarily. That may sound silly, but let me give you an example. The lake organization, we guarantee it as we've said all along, any extra money we have um, is going to go to paying down this loan or paying for the construction. <clears throat> and that's been talked about a lot here. So let me go through some of the numbers here. Regarding the dam fund that the lake was collecting for 20 years now, we have collected a bit over $300,000 over 20 plus years, uh, not 400 as was represented. However, more than half of that has been expend, expend, expended excuse me, in the, this dam renovation project. And that's DAM. <coughs> Engineering costs of over $150,000. And I've got the reports with me here if anybody wants to see it. Uh, the real estate report, which I talked about before, is $20,000. Legal fees in excess of $25,000. And on top of that, dam inspections, maintenance, insurance, et cetera, which exceeds $30,000. In fact, I think it's a lot higher than that. So, what we have left in the account is approximately $100,000. And as we've represented to this board before, and as was touched on by uh, Councilman Major, maybe, we want to hold on to that in case there's a cost overrun on the dam. We're not going to know what the dam renovation is going to cost until we bid it out. And we've represented to this council, and we've represented to those uh, who live around the lake. If the, the bid comes in at a million dollars, a million two, whatever. We're not going to do it. We don't have the money. The state's only giving us 750. We could, and with that extra hundred in the account, we could maybe go up 50, maybe even the whole hundred. I don't know. But we're holding on to that literally as a rainy day fund. If at the end of the construction, we still have that hundred or even a portion of it, we're going to use it to pay down the loan. We've represented that from the beginning. Now, um, lastly, and I've repeated this before, and I think it's said tonight. As we all know, if the loan isn't signed, the lake will be drained. There are many people who don't believe, for whatever reason, that that is not actually going to happen. Um, there was one recently, a town, I forget where, Hamilton, whatever, there's a lake that's getting drained, because they couldn't afford the financing. That is what, again, is required by the law. If we don't get this loan, the lake will be drained. And somebody's going to have to pay for that. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be you guys to pay for that. And as you know, that's going to be several hundred thousand dollars, as you know, through your experience with Maple Leaf. We've got a hundred grand we'll toss you away, but we're not going to be able to pay two or three or four hundred thousand dollars to get a decommissioned. 
So the choice is simple, save the lake and ensure the property values remain where they are now. What can be done now is if the, or if the ordinance passes, the assessment won't start until after the construction is done. If people want to come up with their own real estate appraisal, they can do that and they can bring that to the town to the tax assessor and say, hey, look, it's different. I don't think it's gonna be any different or if it is a whole lot different, but that may be an option of theirs. But that doesn't need to be done now. That, the ordinance doesn't need to be skipped now. That's something that can be done later. Um, so the choice is uh, either we get the loan at 2% or we take a step back, buy some time, and the DEP is gonna say, well, you're not making progress anymore? All right, you lose the loan. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, I don't know. But that's what they said to Mr. White, in fact, that makes sense to us too. As long as we're making progress, they'll hold on to the money. But once that progress stops, it's not gonna be there. And by voting no against this ordinance, that's gonna stop the process. And I'm afraid that's gonna trigger the DEP to say, money's gone, we're gonna drain the lake. My two cents. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. I just want to say I don't think that voting no is stopping the process. I think it's refocusing the process in another direction. And I know that this money is encumbered. It's down in Trenton. It's there. It's not like they have to reapprove it or anything. And they've been. They have every time we've gone to them, they've been okay. Just, just keep moving. Keep moving forward. There are no rush to. It's not a high priority dam. There are no rush to drain it. There are no rush to do anything. As far as they're concerned, keep the dam. Let's let's get it done. But let's do it in a fair and equi equitable way for all these residents. I, I hope you're right. You guys are you guys would have to pay the drain. Yeah, but to answer that question that I asked, then I'll leave. If the lake gets drained, somebody's got to pay for it. It's going to be the people in the neighborhood. Correct. And again, that'll be a couple hundred thousand dollars right there. Thank you. Tom, may I, before Tom comes up, may I ask a question? Of sure. The attorney? Just hold one Tom, second. Let me ask the question of the attorney. So, uh, Mr. Giblin, in regard to the way in which um, the residents of Lake Reality will be required to pay the money. How will that be assigned to the properties? How how will that cost be assigned to the properties? After the after the total uh, cost of the project is determined, the, the cost of the loan, it will be assessed based upon the formula that's in the ordinance. No, I mean for decommissioning the dam. Oh, if it has to be decommissioned. So if the dam, if if for some reason or other we decide not to uh, co-sign a loan, mm -hmm. and the DEP requires that the dam be decommissioned and the lake be drained, how will that cost be assigned to the residents of the... It, it's gonna be the association, I assume, is the owner of the lake. They're gonna be responsible for decommissioning it. If, if there's any additional cost that the town would have to pick up, I would assume that we would go through the same process with a special assessment for those properties that are benefiting. So, uh, Cliff, and I don't know, Cliff, what's your last name? Giantonio. Uh, Mr. Giantonio said that they did not feel that they had the funds uh, to pay for a decommissioning of the of the lake. So let's say it's say what four hundred thousand dollars to decommission the the dam. They pay a hundred thousand. There's three hundred thousand dollars left over. That three hundred thousand then is the burden for. The residents well, it's, it's going to be the DEP is going to have to go after the owner of the lake to have it decommissioned. Okay. We don't have any authority over that. The DEP does. Okay. But the town is not necessarily going to be paying to decommission. Not necessarily, it. but we could. Just like you know, we talked about other special assessments. If you put in sewers or sidewalks or whatever, you you pro rata assess it against the properties that benefit. Okay. Sorry, Tom. My name is Tom Perch. I live uh, right at the lake. I've spoken here several times. I think I can go on my mic. Uh, I spoke last week supporting the ordinance. Uh, this week I want to come at it from a little different angle based on what I've heard. Uh, first, I want to start with uh, Councilman Yago, your most recent, just a few moments ago, comments about uh, the number of 
not sign the petition. I was out of town, didn't have a good opportunity to read it. Can't say whether I would have signed it or not. Possibly not. And, and mostly because a, a perception that there was no other option than right now to sign or or to um, that you sign or we drain. I'm not sure that I have exactly that same. of the communications have been from two. I've been right in the middle of it. I've probably been the primary communicator to the Lake Reality Homeowners Association. I don't think anybody in that association would deny that. So I speak from this experience, and I will say that descriptions of how communications went, if you were to choose one side what Randy White said, or one side what Cliff said, Randy's on the on the money. Um, the, the, the communication has been very poor, um, despite all purported being. Nonetheless, and, and, and on that point, why one of the reasons I think this petition has uh, really struck a chord and why the neighbors are upset, myself included, is that it came out of the blue. It came from a time of poor communication. Not necessarily no communication, but poor communication. Emails went out when, where I would ask a question, for example, and an email would go out to the entire community giving an answer to my question rather than addressing it. We had meetings with uh, the association in my house uh, and all the neighbors, and we had the, uh, from an early view of this appraisal, we had the expectation that the number would be about five times as much that we'd be paying. We we're comparing to many other communities. Uh, that have gone through this process, that was on the high side, but I think we were all, and I'm not gonna speak for anybody else, but I know I can speak for myself. It's like, okay, five times, not unreasonable. That's the way it is. Uh, so when it came out 18, with no opportunity to um, have any conversation other than this is the fact, um, I think that raises a lot of But, again, I, don't I can't say for everyone, but I don't think there's a, somebody, anyone who lives on the lake who wants to leave the train. And that's certainly not the case. And I would certainly stand by still being supportive of the ordinance if today the only way this is going to happen is, uh, is vote yes, then I'm, I'm for it. My number's 13 and a half times as much. It's not 18, but, you know, it's a big number. So, um, we're all, I think we're all for having a lake rather than not having one. It's really been about the process, and it's really been it's about the cost. And a little bit more on the cost, I'll, I'll make a suggestion that I have no idea whether you know, my neighbors are, are interested in this, but um, prior to this appraisal happening, I made many comments to the association management, Cliff specifically, about assessing beachfront property. I lean more in their attorney, made an argument that I still continue to think she may come up here and counter me, it makes no sense, that the beachfront property is not worth anything, you can't assess it. It's just one example of ways that which I said or others said, here's what's going to happen in the appraisal, and we, we need to address it. Those things are basically ignored. So you know, the anger you're hearing is all about that. It's about being ignored. I'm looking past that and saying, hey, I got a, I got a nice house on a lake. I want that lake, that's gonna cost me a bunch, okay. I would rather it cost me less. So I'm gonna make a, a proposal that you can consider that, um, and I have no idea whether the seven signees are interested in this or not, that we have an opportunity to meet with the town assessor and the appraisal company to at least express our concerns about what's wrong with that appraisal. Now, rather than wait for the assessor to come that's just an option I'll throw out there for you know, your consideration and perhaps it expedites things. Um, and then the other part of it is, it's the money that's been, been collected for the dam uh, all along, um, as 
Cliff said pays, has paid a lot of bills, no doubt. And there's 100,000 left, great. But there are, there's a, there's a provision in the regulation that governs this statute that allows for contributions, voluntary contributions. And, and, and Cliff alluded to this, the Lake Association can make a voluntary contribution on an ongoing basis from Dan fees that come from our, what we call associate members. There's about 100 of them right now. Uh, those are people who don't live in the Lake community, they live outside. Um, and they pay a damn fee today. If we continue that damn fee, and the association makes a contribution of that damn fee times, let's say it's 100, that's half the damn loan. That's, the loan's about $45,000 a year. That's 22 five. Um, I, 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 I'd be feeling pretty good if that was done, and that's not a change in the way things have worked. That would just be a continuation of today's I, I, I'll just sum up by saying I'm terribly disappointed that the meeting's gone this way. I came here hoping that you know, this would be an easy vote yes, and if you vote yes, that's fine. I'm, I'm good with it. But I, I hope uh, if, you, if, if you don't vote yes, uh, this isn't the end of it, that we, we can bring this conversation to, a, to a, a place where there's actually good communication and consideration of everyone's views, because while I did sign the petition, I'm totally with Randy that he depicted the communications as they happened over the last several years. So I know, I was there. So um, let's see if I have anything else before we drop off. Again, I thank everyone, in the, everyone at the lakes for the lake. Um, it's a matter of being treated fairly, being spoken to, and having a fair call. I'd like to thank you for your comments because what you just said was that with participation of the lakefront owners and with more participation from the owners and the residents, you could get a lot more done and come to agreements. And I think that's the issue, like you said, was the lack of communication. And and this is the way we're going, and that's it. And if we don't like it, yeah. so I think I think what you said is very good. And I think that we should be considering, if not voting no, at least voting to table it until a committee can be set up between those lake owners and the and Lake Reality uh, oh like that, I see and, 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 and maybe make some progress that way where everybody's happy. And you're not gonna make everybody happy, but you can make people a lot happier than they are tonight. Right. Sure, come on. And then I'm, uh, I was I was just going to make the recommendation to this council to to what Bill just said is to table it for a month. And would you feel confident enough in a month's period of time to talk to our assessor and at least understand the uh, appraisal and uh, and be comfortable doing that? Or do you think a month a month is enough time for you to get your your ammunition or 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 a a, a conversation with our assessor to, you know, I'm looking at you, Randy, because I know uh, you seem to know the most about the appraisal. Do you think it's something that could be worked on, or yeah. are you thinking that we're way off on the appraisal? It's a great question. Thanks for asking. So that was my question. Randy, could you speak into oh, the microphone? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor, for that question. It's an excellent question. That was my question on. January 31st, first question I asked, there's errors in the appraisal, what's the process for getting them fixed? And the response from Cliff G. Antonio was, there are no errors in the appraisal. And communication was stopped. And that's the reason why with no communication from the dam committee, right. there's no dispute for the town. Well, maybe there, maybe there isn't any errors in the, in the appraisal. That's my point is, I'll give you a month, or this council will hopefully give you a month and say, do your investigations. Look at that appraisal, talk to our, our tax assessor who is an amazingly smart tax assessor. He, Morris County, since he's taken over as our assessor, we haven't lost any, I don't think any appeals in Morris County courts because he knows his stuff. So he, he looked at it already, but if you have something that you don't think is right, bring it to his attention and then this council will 
table it and move on a vote for next month. But if I call the DEP again, which every time I call him, he makes this little smirk every time he hears my voice. If I tell him again, hey, we voted it down, but we want to keep moving forward, I don't, I'm just nervous that he's going to say no. You know, so I'm trying to figure out if I say to him, you know what, we need a month, they table it. It's just they're going to oversee, look at the petition again. I mean, the appraiser again. Is that something you guys would be comfortable with? I'm looking at you as the owner of, as You're the representative of the seven members that are. The question is, should we table this the next month? For you to look at this appraisal and work with our assessor to decide if it's right or wrong. Okay. That's to address all of your concerns. Not, not just that. I mean, you, you had a, a list of concerns. Um, and, and I don't think it should be just that one thing. I think it should be everything. Yeah. There's, there's procedure. There's procedure for the uh, assessment commission that um, I'm not, I don't know if it's been followed or not, but I think a month will give us some time to, to look at the, uh, the steps that were taken. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm, there's no one up here that wants to do anything maliciously towards this group of people. We, we, my, my thing with them was always, and I said to Cliff, point blank, I said, don't waste our time, come here with something that'll, that'll, that works in court and that it's right for everybody, and not right for everybody, I can't say that, uh, but, but it'll work in court and that we can save the lake. So Cliff said, okay, and it took him a while to pull all that together. He worked with our attorney and all that information that you have all our emails on, and that's where we came up to, this is the only way it will work. Okay. If you're saying the appraiser's not right or his, his numbers are off on your amazingly beautiful house that's on the water, um, then maybe he is wrong. But let's find that out. So we'll give you a month to find that out at least, and then I'll, I mean, they're gonna, this group is gonna have to vote on whether they wanna push it for a month, but uh, I'm hoping they will. But I think a month's time, and when you talk to Chris, you'll realize he knows his stuff. So hopefully, hopefully you're right. It'll save you a little bit of money, and unfortunately, it'll cost everybody else money because it'll be divided up. But I'm just. Now, Mayor, you don't want to introduce because nothing. It's already been introduced. This is the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is this is uh, the final passage. Yeah. So that if this council is willing to do that, they can make that motion and. Uh, and they could push that. Oh, I don't know. Can they? Can we move that ordinance up to now to to, to see sure. if they'll? You, you run the agenda, okay, so it, it's up to you guys. I mean, does anybody have? I, I don't have any problem uh, tabling it for a month. Uh, I think it's a, a good thing to let uh, all the owners uh, at least have another look at this, talk to Chris, have a conversation, and I would just recommend to everybody in the association. You know, uh, this is a big deal. Uh, nobody up here wants to see that at all. So, uh, you know, these issues are not easy. I was very familiar with dealing with these with Pace and Lakes. Um, you know, the process isn't fair. Uh, you know, especially anything to do with the state of New Jersey never seems to work correctly. And this process with uh, the loan agreement yeah. is, is asinine as it is. That's unfortunately what we've been told that you've got, that you have to do. So, um, I'm, I, I'm fine with the table. Well, when, so, I, when I mentioned it to the DEP, he looked at me like I was crazy when I said that's a lot of money for someone who lives on the lake versus someone who doesn't live on the lake. He goes, oh, well, it's the way we do it now, quote, unquote. So, but um, I, did you want to hear one more person, I guess, before we, or, or you guys want to make a motion? Uh, you got else? Oh, I saw. Yes, who was who sat down when I so, so rudely Barbara. brought Rand? Yeah, hi, Barb. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the parties. Sorry, it's maybe been asked twice. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak before the Appraisal Review Commission. When I asked the DEP that question, he told me the lake will be drained, but there'll still be a stream coming through the middle of it to Basin Lakes. And it just won't. Land. It won't have a dam. It won't have a dam that'll. A create, little yeah. trickle that yeah. will be gone when we don't have rain for a month. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what they do. So, again, no one up here wants to drain the lake. <laughs> no, I understand that. I just yeah. you know somebody. No, I understand. And I forget. I don't know who it was that people 
people who use the lake but live elsewhere are currently paying a fee. Yeah. And please, everyone can you know put a contract on my life for saying this. I don't have never been near Lake Reality except for walking past on what? the road. No. But mm -hmm. I know it feeds wetlands. So of course it feeds faces, Does. but it feeds wetlands. So. So there's huge environmental impact, but the DEP does not care. <laughs> And I, I can't tell it. It's, that's no, the no, way it is. They can't even care when they don't. Yeah, but, they don't. It's horrible. But some people in Kittlewan do. So I guess I, looking I'm at on. more creative yeah. ways to access, you know, five dollars a year towards Lake Reality Dam. When we re when we originally started this, I'll, I'll I was send it to you. when we originally started this, we said, okay, we'll hold a note for you guys. If you default, we get the lake. That would be great. And yeah. DP, no, can't do it. And then we also can't give you guys a loan. So. All right, last one, and then I'm going to ask for a motion from these guys to. So go ahead. Name. Sure. <clears throat> Rob Elliott. I'm on the dam committee. I live in Lake Reality. I'm a resident. Um, I want to address a couple of things I've heard tonight, criticisms about the committee, especially communication. It's a subjective opinion. I've had people come up to me and say, what's with all the emails? I appreciate the communication, but what's with all the emails? Like, Tired of it. Um, on top of that, I can understand if we didn't have a town hall. We had a town hall. We got the petition sent by the township. The petitioners didn't send that petition to the to the dam committee. It was sent to you guys, and then you shared it. And what did we do? We put together a meeting. Cliff invited the petitioners twice via email. And who came to that meeting to address the petitioners? Was it Anthony and Sean? How many petitioners showed up? Yeah. Sorry, what? Zero. Zero. Yes. Right? Yes. It's a pleasure connecting with you again that night. I apologize, you wasted your time. There was a flyer that was put in our mailboxes yesterday, residents, about liens and a bunch of lies and some untruthful information. Whose mailbox was that not delivered to? No, mine. I didn't get it. Cliff, did you get it? No. Cliff, when you invited the petitioners to come to that special meeting with Sean and Anthony, how many replied to your email? None. I want to also realign what the committee's job was to do. To deliver you a package that complies with the statute. To provide you the confidence to vote and approve this. Okay, so I understand, I've heard from a couple council members, like, go back and figure it out. Well, figure it out, is that gonna hold up in court? That's been a primary concern since day one. What's gonna hold up in court? A, hand, a little handshake deal? Something written on a napkin? Right, so when I joined the committee to contribute, what we ran into was we have to trust the expert. Mr. Russo, I heard you say this last week, trust the expert, that's what we did. We hired an appraiser to do this. So we're following all the right steps. And I'm just curious, I understand we're going maybe in different directions, but after all this, after Cliff got up here, Eileen talked about it, our lawyer last week, what is gonna be different? What are we going to find that's different? Is the statute going to change overnight? The only reason we've been here for the last two hours, and I understand, I fully understand, it's a lot of money on Lakefront. But when we did things by the book, looking through emails, it's project management. We've been communicating with the town back and forth to meet repetitively. It's project management. I can understand if we use an appraiser that was not an expert, but we did. So you can vote whichever way you want to vote tonight and table things, that's fine. I'm just curious what's going to be different in a month. Thank you. Thank you. you got two minutes. You got one minute. <laughs> what's your name? Randy got uh, a good hour, so. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Nick Aust. Uh, I'm new to Get On. I, I, I moved here about a year and a half ago. Um, I'm on Glen Rock Drive. Um, I don't want to say anything to offend anyone here. I have two little kids. Uh, one's three years old, uh, one's one and a half, so we are just got our hands tied right now, but um, they love the lake, so. Um, like, no work. <laughs> sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know how tonight was going to go. I didn't know, to me, a lot of the lakefront property owners, I haven't really ever seen them before. I don't know if they like the lake or not, so I kind of came here thinking that this was going to be a fight. They don't want the lake. That's not what I'm hearing tonight. Um, I'm hearing that they, you know, they want this to work just like us. I agree that when I first opened, how much I'm going to pay versus them, I did think it was like, I was like, oh wow, like, I don't have to pay this, that's crazy. But, and, and I'm not saying like, I understand how assessments go, um, but I, 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 and I don't disagree with the assessment, but I, I'm not an assessor. And I don't think a lot of people here are assessors. And they're all just talking about, oh, one to 1800, one to 18. Like, it's not the value of your house like it's like all together it's just based on like the little amount and i say little it's small for me it's a lot larger for them i think none of us understand how the assessment works um i don't know if they'd be open to another whole new assessment just to kind of cross reference um i mean if if we can't come like if we can't come to a resolution um like i'm willing to pay more my kids will be devastated to lose this. Um, I mean, look in my son's eyes and tell him you're going to drain this lake. And no one's going to drain the lake. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Thank you, Mayor. Well, don't worry. There, e either way, this is going to work, and, and no one here wants that lake drained. So yeah. Okay. I we, appreciate. We that. just have a month to figure things out, and then. Or and, and I, I keep I saying wanna, that. I apologize. I just want to add that we like moved to Lake Reality because. Like, we just love the idea of being in on the Lake community, um, a year and a half ago, and I always saw signs for Save Lake Reality, but, um, I don't know, that's, I haven't been super involved in town, I, I like I said, I have my hands full, and, um, this is like my first any type of town meeting or anything like that, so I apologize if I, they're always like this, I'm kind of <laughs> rambling, but, uh, <laughs> Get um, more involved. We need help. But the, I'll tell you what: if you, if you turn around and look, turn around and look at all these people. Everyone here lives in Kinlon because their kids love it here. Yeah. So Lake Real is a huge part of that. This council wants them to be happy as homeowners, and and the rest of the, the lake to stay there forever. So it will happen. We just need to okay. hopefully, hopefully so wait a month. So are you confident that if you table it for a month, that the great part about this, I don't get a vote. So I'm out of this. Unless these guys three three tie, I don't have a vote. But but I am I am very <laughs> I am very confident that this council, of course, they're could we do another assessment? Just to well, I would say yes, but then you're talking another twenty five thousand dollars, and and then then we have two. Which one's right? Let's well, go with the one that helps the lakefront properties more. Th that's that's true. I, I don't live on the lake, like I said, but but let's let's, let's one more. Let's have reputable. Let's have their representatives sit down with our assessor who is a very smart man and show them what's what if, if it's randall's house you know if you go on wikipedia his house is worth nine uh, nine hundred and eight thousand dollars let's look at the appraisal and then let let's figure out if it makes sense you know so there is ways that he's going to be able to tell is this appraisal right okay. so that's what he'll come back to this council with and you guys will be hopefully satisfied with or maybe there'll be something different so but either way this council wants to save the lake, but we have to do what's right for the taxpayers again. Uh, I'm sorry for rambling, everyone. I no, just, you're uh, right. We'll let you I'm in the town. Here, so. We'll let you stay. All right. Thank you. All right. So, John, come on, come on. You got, you got to see you on a senior guy. One, I remember the day when your, when your daughter went into the bathroom at Lake Reality and shut the door and it was her and a raccoon in there. You remember that? That was horrible. Everybody was like...
That was, oh my gosh. That's just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the busiest kennel I had for a long, a lot of news reporters, but that was. But uh, go ahead, John, I'm sorry. We're all here, and it's all due to miscommunication, lack of communication, uh, downright lies that we told, and people on this damn committee have lied to you guys, too. And that's really, really concerning. Worse than that, it lied to all of us over and over and over again, not telling us the facts, making up their own stories of what they want, and never including any of the late friend people in any of the going on with them, with the exception of Tom Perch for a period of time, and he was systematically removed. Part of the letter that Cliff put out today was he asked two lakefront people who were asked to join the committee. I have to ask Cliff, who were those two? I didn't want to put it on there because I don't want to embarrass you. Go ahead. Uh, Monica Trinidad and Rick Dead. On the dam committee? Yep. Well, you asked me to meet with you. I mean, the over that is you guys. That we have no control over your association or your dam committee. Okay. The only thing I'm going to do is set you up with our professional that's going to either show you good or bad about the appraisal. Okay, so I can't. I can't do anything about your committees. You, I mean, as as people always say to us, we can vote you out. You can vote them out. You know. So uh, I work with those guys. I don't think they had any underlying. I think they they were just trying to get things done, and and I was telling them to give me something to get it done. So it might have been that we were all working too fast, and maybe something. But I don't know. I'm not going to defend them. I I, I would, but I uh, let's just move forward with this vote, see where we're going, and hopefully things are going to work out next month. Okay. Again, what's going to make them include? Well, I told you that, that you're going to be you're going to meet with our appraiser. Okay. At that point, our appraiser will tell you this works, this doesn't work, and then the lake reality component of it has nothing to do with us. We will meet with anyone who wants to meet, as we've always said. Yeah, I, I was here last Tuesday with, with Anthony. Yeah. Anytime you guys want to meet, I mean, the, anybody on the council, the mayor, uh, are willing to meet with anybody to try to yeah. help you guys any way we can. Yeah. I'd like to offer to when you do meet with the appraiser, I'd like to meet her. Sure. The other major concern is just by rough numbers, we should have about four hundred thousand dollars in that damn fund. They're saying three hundred, we're missing a hundred thousand dollars somewhere. I think we need a real, real forensic well, do, accounting. Do you, well I mean do you have that again, that's not us. I mean you, you guys can Call uh, I guess if they're a 503 or whatever they are, you could call the government. I mean, uh, at a higher level, and they, uh, the federal government, yeah, and they'll they'll audit them or whatever. I, but I don't, like I said, I don't think they're hiding anything. They would have, but I don't know. You got to have somebody on that committee that can see the books. So right, and that's, that's they they say it's posted online. Is that they've never produced an income statement. Right. But are you a member of the Lake Associate of, the, of their association? Of course. Oh, then I guess you right. might. And they just have it. And we haven't had elections in quite a while. And if we had outright elections, maybe we wouldn't be here tonight. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to look up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, what do you want to do? I need a motion or if you want to do something or a 
Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we table uh, Ordinance 03-2024, um, authorizing the special assessment for the Lake Reality Dam improvements until uh, the next public meeting. Okay, do I have a second? Second. I need a roll call, please, Karen. Just a, just a quick discussion there. Just, oh. just a quick, sorry. Sorry, can no? It's a, it's not a, okay, never mind, never mind. I want to abide by the rules. You can't discuss it. Okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. Councilman Yonago. Yes. Councilman Harris. Yes. Councilman Mabee. Yes. Councilman Russo. Yes. Councilman Churro. Yes. Councilman Frank. Yes. Okay, so that'll be moved to next month, which will be, where do we have April? So I'm one of these guys. If I may, Your Honor, I'd like to make one last statement on this. This is something that is incumbent upon the residents of Lake Reality and not incumbent upon the council. You have to resolve this amongst yourselves. We, it's kind of like in Shakespearean terms, you're the Capulets and the Montagues, and we are the deus ex machina, the king, and we can only say, stop it. We can't come in and solve the problem. You have to work out the problems yourselves. Okay, now we're on to the rest of our boring meeting. Um, they're going, the next meeting is the 18th. April 18th. April we'll 18th. The next public meeting. Public meeting. There is a workshop one week prior, the Thursday one week prior, and every council man and woman up here is willing to accept emails or any questions. Motion to adjourn. No. Well, you were going to go soon. Yo. Yeah, we might have to. Yeah. All right, council committee reports. Want to do committee reports? Do you have them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, okay. okay. Yeah. Come you on, want to talk in a workshop? Come on. Just give sure. us the, the, you know, the quick. Quick. Okay. We have a meeting still going on, so if you guys could just <clears throat> head outside, thank you. All right, so we have uh, council committee reports, open space. Anything, Council Vignago? Uh, just real quick, we're coming up. Uh, the DEP is getting Yeah. The DEP is getting there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Folks, that was great. please take your discussions outside. No, not Mary. All right. Well, okay. Well, thank, thank you, Bill, for that great report. We'll move on to personnel. <laughs> Councilman Harris. Thank you, Mayor. Um, two, two items on the list for personnel committee. Uh, the, the best news that we've had in a long time is that uh, Officer Mark Ehrenberg has recovered fully from his his uh, accident back in November. And he is back on the force, and we welcome him back, and we're very happy to have him back as is the chief. Uh, the second order of business is we are winding up the PBA negotiations. Uh, tonight, I believe, the PBA is talking to their membership and discussing some of the items that we've been discussing. We will have a full uh, contract back to, to present to um, council uh, shortly, if uh, all goes well. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Public Works and Recreation, Recreation, Councilman Maybe. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, recreation this uh, Sunday um, uh, at 12 o'clock, the Easter egg hunt is 
going to be held over at the high school. It was going to be held at the KRP field off Boone Avenue, but with the um, heavy rains that are coming in Saturday, uh, they uh, shifted the location and it is now going to be at the high school at 12 o'clock. Um, that's pretty much it for recreation. Public Works, uh, John and the crew should be wrapping up uh, the water line extension for the K KRP field. Uh, if everybody doesn't remember, the well uh, unfortunately went bad over at the uh, facility and we tapped into the uh, sewer line connection from the Walnut Lane project and uh, ran a two inch water line up to the facility. Also, we've got uh, a bunch of things on with a, uh, a big paving uh, project this year. Hopefully everything uh, goes as planned. The contractor should be coming in to smoke rise uh, sometime in April. And we were able to meet with him and try to get him to stay right here in Kenlon and uh, tackle our project. So uh, that's moving along. That's pretty much it for me. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, we'll move on. To John, did you say a big bacon project? Hate it. Oh. <laughs> no bacon for you. Okay, we'll move on to ordinance and library. Councilman Russo. Uh, thank you, Mayor. We You're have welcome. a number of ordinances tonight that we're uh, considering for both introduction and for adoption. So I will uh, touch on those. The one thing I did want to point out at the last Board of Health meeting, uh, I don't know if anyone is aware that the Board of Health is empowered to pass ordinances only concerning public health. So they can't pass land use ordinances or, or things uh, along those lines, but they can pass ordinances uh, concerning uh, public health. And and does that does that have to go to us as well? Or no. 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 Independent right to do it. Independent. And then they have to do two readings and yep. all that kind of stuff? And they did. Yep. They did everything correctly. Are they required to inform us at all? No. Really? Nope. Cool. Uh, so um, they did pass a, 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 a health ordinance at the last meeting, and it affected um, uh, mostly fees for what's charged for various uh, health uh, inspections, et cetera, et cetera. And it really kind of brought stuff up to date. Um, mm -hmm. They eliminated a lot of obsolete language, um, things that no longer are applicable. They, they, um, they did away with that. So, uh, that was passed at the last uh, meeting, and the, uh, of course the uh, borough clerk was provided with that ordinance to post on, the, uh, on our website. Um, in addition, they have a couple of other ordinances that they have been discussing. Uh, one is the requirement that a, a food um, establishment, a restaurant or whatever, have a certified food manager present at all times in the establishment. So, so right now, the establishments are required to have a certified food manager, but they may be off that day. And if there's a, uh, an issue or a violation, no, you can't close that. Um, you know, uh, in, and a health inspector comes in and says, hey, you have a situation here they say, well, the, the certified food manager's off today. All the rest of the employees kind of look at each other and go, oh, no, what are we doing? So they're going to require that all times that the establishment's open, it has to be at least one certified food manager. Um, they also are looking into um, regulating electronic, the retail sale of electronic smoking devices and psychoactive active substances. We see a lot of that stuff vaping and they're looking to regulate that stuff. Um, that's about it for me, Mayor. Thank you. Right. My, only, my only worry with that food uh, service manager is, you know, most of our food establishments in town are small, you know, mom and pop, five people working, you know, the, you know. Well, generally, so a small know. establishment like that, the owner is the serve, you know, gets there certified. All time. Yeah. But somebody's got to be on board to make sure that you know, people aren't getting poisoned. Mm. So, you know, that's, that's the intent. Yeah, it's a risk you take for good food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you, you. Councilman. Um, finance and public safety, Council President Chirdo. 
Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, so first, um, first, I'd like to express my condolences to the uh, Triborough uh, First Aid Squad uh, on the passing of longtime member Leslie Graff. Uh, Leslie uh, just recently celebrated uh, 35 years of, uh, of active, dedicated service. Um, so I just wanted to uh, express my condolences to not only her, but uh, uh, her family, but to the uh, ambulance squad uh, as well. Um, the uh, officers, our, our police department uh, officers are actively uh, working uh, to prepare our 2024 uh, Junior Police Academy. So that's really exciting. Uh, more information to follow on dates. Um, it's always a, always a great uh, event. Our uh, fire company this past weekend responded to a car fire on Boot Ave. Uh, unfortunately, the car uh, was basically fully involved at the time, so, um, you know, unfortunately there was not much that can be done with the car, uh, but the uh, fire company just acted very quickly in regards to making sure they protected everything else uh, around the car. Um, some of the siding did melt, but, uh, but they, they did everything they did to protect the surrounding uh, structures, so um, uh, quick action uh, saved, uh, saved some property there. Um, Another thing on the fire company is, don't forget, April 21st, uh, come on down, Company One, to get the best pancakes this side of the uh, Mississippi. Um, they have their pancake breakfast on April 27th, uh, or April 21st, I apologize, April 21st, uh, so please uh, come on down for that. And thank you very much. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, coordinate, Councilwoman Frank. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, the Historical Society continues to meet to discuss their strategy towards reopening. They had their latest meeting last Tuesday. Um, and then uh, also I just wanted to give a, a quick thank you to Mary Ann Hudson of Columbia Bank. Um, as we mentioned in the workshop last week, the Columbia Bank has generously donated a red maple tree to be planted here by Borough Hall to celebrate Arbor Day. They're partnering with Downs Tree Company on this donation, so look for that to be planted the third week of April. That's great. That's it. All right, well, thank you. Okay, hearing from the public. Is there anybody from the public like to be heard at this point? <laughs> it does not want to talk about Lake Reality. <laughs> Anyone? Who's this guy? Seeing no one? Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not here to talk about the <laughs> I just wanted to thank the council and specifically the Public Safety Committee for their help with the um, recent New Jersey DCA ARP grant that we applied for. So through the um, collaboration with uh, the council, the, the uh, Public Safety Committee and Millennium Strategies, we were able to secure $73,000, which will go for purchase of uh, bunker gear, bottles, and uh, rescue homes. Awesome. And also the, the pancakes on the other side of the Mississippi are not better. <laughs> Thank you. Well, one thing there with the uh, just so that the public knows. So, like Alex said, we got twenty. I'm sorry, seventy-two thousand dollars in uh, in the grant that we partnered with the fire company Millennium Strategies. But it's important to know that while we got seventy-two thousand, the largest award in the state to any municipality was seventy-five. So, mm -hmm. Kinalon fared very well in uh, in that award, considering every single community that went and got up against this. We got. 72 and, and a large municipality only got uh, only got 75 so we did we did very good, good. Well, thank you that's awesome all right anybody else from the public sir no you're good all right bill doug welcome back <laughs> all right beth you're slipping okay so we'll close it to the public uh payment of bills for march 21st, 2024, I need a, a, a motion to approve. So moved. I need a second. second. Okay, roll call, please. Councilman Yago? Yeah. Councilman Barrett? Yes. Councilman Mabey? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Trudeau? Yes. Yes. Okay. I need faster roll calls. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so consent agenda, resolution <laughs> three. <laughs> Vince doesn't like that if there's money involved, right? What's it? If there's money involved, we're all saying yes, right? Well, you have to vote. See? All right, so we're doing it. say yes or not, it's a story. <laughs> so the next one's not money. I like Vince, so he's all right. I don't do what he says. No, I think the, all right. I think the consent and the uh, yes. deals, you have to Okay. Vote. Resolution 3-124 to... Oh, I'm sorry. We're going... I don't know where my head is right now. Consent agenda A through J. Do I have a motion to approve? Can we take out Jay? 
No. Why not? Okay. That's for the uh, paving. Jay's minutes. Yeah, Jay's payment. Jay's payment on the resolution. Not on mine. No. No. There's two J's. There's two J's. There's two J's, that's why. L. It's supposed to be L over here. No, what are you taking? Yeah, okay. it just, you're talking about it. The minutes? The minutes. Okay. All right, so we have uh, resolutions A through K. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Roll call, please. Councilman Yago? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're pulling out the approval of the minutes. L from Councilman Harris. Uh, just to say something. get the minutes prior to the meeting so that we can actually look at the minutes. That would be great. Okay. We usually do, don't we? Mic in the oh, your mic's up in the air. What was your... I'd just like to have more time to read the minutes prior to the meeting. Okay. So we can get them possibly on a Tuesday or something prior to a Thursday meeting. Okay. Done. All right. Would you like to make the motion to approve those minutes? Or have you not read them? Make a motion to... Uh, Approve the minutes. Okay. Do I have a second to help poor Eric out? Second, yeah. All right. Any roll call, please? Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Ladies and gentlemen, get comfortable. We got a lot of old business, new business here. Um, we'll start with. Uh, okay, you go. This is both. This is. Okay, ordinance number one dash two thousand twenty four, an ordinance amending chapter two hundred seven, the borough of Kinellon code, titled zoning. This ordinance was introduced last at our meeting. No. Yes, we did hold it on January eighteenth. Oh, it's old business. I'm sorry. Yes. You're right. Okay, so I'm incorrect. The ordinance was introduced at our last meeting held on January 18, 2024. The proper notice was published as required by law. A copy was posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. Additional copies were made available to the public. This meeting is now open to anyone who would like to speak on Ordinance 1-24. Okay, Councilman Harris. Yes. Councilman Harris. Anyone? Okay, hearing none, I will now close the meeting to the public and bring it back to the dais. Does anyone in the council wish to speak at this time? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it's highly irregular. Well, not highly irregular. It's pretty irregular when uh, ordinances are introduced without going through the ordinance committee, and this particular ordinance was introduced uh, and was written without uh, participation from the ordinance committee. It has to do with sheds um, and side road setbacks and number of sheds on property. Councilman, I went for a variance and I got denied. Okay, so you changed the. Okay, so. I, will, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide, public. I have nothing to hide. I went for a variance for a pool, and in the process, I needed a variance because, unbeknownst to me, my shed uh, was not in the proper setback. Um, I had two sheds, and I was not allowed two sheds, considering that second shed is for garbages no more than 24 square feet. Uh, my deck was not conformant and my air conditioning was not conformant. And when I sat before the board, I was under the impression that that's what you go to the zoning board for, is to get variances. And I was told, unfortunately, sir, we cannot approve your pool unless you give something else up on your property. Okay, my so I had to give up my shed that holds my garbage. And then I drove around town and I jotted down 
50 plus homes that are also in violation. And I said, well, guess what? If those other 50 homes are in violation, then we need to A, start enforcing our ordinances, or B, look at how we can amend our ordinances so that a resident can have a second structure. Keep in mind, if you live on a property that has 1.3 acres in Kinelon and you have more than one shed, you are in violation of our ordinance. 1.3 acres, you're only allowed one shed, 60,000 square feet. So what this ordinance allows is for you to have that second structure. And that structure is no more than 24 square feet. So keep in mind, we're also voting tonight on a salt shed ordinance. Keep in mind, a salt shed ordinance will be passed tonight or introduced. So what I'm trying to do, because Councilman Yago is 110% correct. There is a councilman up here that is affected by this ordinance, which is myself. I have nothing to hide. I am not ashamed. What I'm trying to do is help every other resident in this community that lives under 1.3 acres and wants to have a little small structure to put maybe four garbage cans in. Maybe they want to have a little structure for their wood pile. Because if you have a structure for your wood pile and you have a shed, you are in fact in violation. And that's what this ordinance is for. Mr. Yago is trying to paint me as a self-serving councilman. I am not. I dedicate a lot of time, and I do not appreciate you saying that. And you're saying it. It's been said many times on the record publicly, behind closed doors, at work sessions, by other members of this council. And quite frankly, I'm tired of it. This is a good ordinance for the community, and that's why I'm supporting it. Um, I don't know what your 50 violations are, but uh, I've driven around town and I don't think I've counted 50 sheds looking at yards. Uh, and as far as your uh, variances for your pool, you've got several variances for the pool. My understanding is that the Board of Adjustment said, you know, we'll give you a variance for the second shed because it's up, but it's close to your neighbor's property. Please move it four feet. You refused to move it four feet off the neighbor's property. And so you decided that you would change the side yard setbacks. So now your shed is one foot within the setback. Uh, Councilman, the read the record. You were not at the meeting. I, I advise you to, to I get. To, you can talk to who you want, but that is hearsay. Read the record. All right, gentlemen. Bill, what's I'm the reason? I'm tired so, of being accused. Okay. Bill, anything else? else? So right. serving. Bits. No way. Mayor, uh, one thing I just want to point out before everybody out there and listening to this goes in a panic because they have two sheds. If the sheds were placed at the time of placement and they were in compliance with the code, you have nothing to worry about. It's pre-existing, non-conforming use. Only if the shed is new since the uh, you know, the, the, the enforce ordinance. What date is that? Uh, I don't have it at the So how are they gonna how are they gonna know if they're not in violation? Well no one's going around like they should be. We have a shed police. We have a code enforcement <laughs> officer. We need to either enforce our ordinances. How do you propose doing that? Would you, would yeah, you how you to put no how you propose doing it is you see that there's a lot of things going on, like how many people come like why we're doing our, our um, air conditioning ordinance. Why are we doing that? I'm sure Mr. Yob was going to say it's because it affects me, but we're doing it to make it easier because a lot of people get fine, get get their variances have to go and they that's have to pay right. money. Exactly. Right. No, I understand that, but we're not going around to no, properties. I agree. You know, uh, you know, talking to people and saying why you have two sheds. Correct. You only get in trouble when you go for a variance. Well, because what the what the board of adjustment does correctly so is they make sure that the whole property is in compliance and they give the homeowner the opportunity to either make it compliant or apply for a variance. I don't know the specifics of your I, I situation. I mean, I, none of my neighbors came out and complained. It was just the, the board made me give something up. Well, it's, it, I, mean, I paid, that's I paid the, my fee. That's what, the code, that's what the code is. But anybody out there who's got two sheds, and if you put them in at a time where that was legal, do not worry, it is fine. So you don't have to be in a panic about uh, someone coming around saying that your, uh, you, you know, your shed is, is illegal. 
merit. Uh, I just know, make let me just, sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. Let, let me just make one other comment. The, the current ordinance that we have on the books that's being uh, proposed for amendment tonight, um, our ordinance committee put together a, a, a comprehensive committee of members of the Board of Adjustment, the Planning Board, the Borough Engineer, the Compliance Officer, um, and, and various members of the public to come up with uh, uh, solutions to some of these problems that, that Councilman Trudeau mentioned. You know, we, we felt that there were situations where people were coming before the Board of Adjustment needlessly, that they would have to have surveys and things like that for small kinds of projects like that. And we address that in, in the ordinance that's currently on the books today. Um, part of the, that, that thinking was they wanted to limit, the committee wanted to limit the proliferation of shell, sheds. You know, it's nice to have a shed. Does your neighbor want to look at it? No. So we, we did that and then uh, I, I feel that what we have on the books today is adequate and I don't feel that we need to, um, to uh, adopt this current ordinance. One thing that I just statement I'd like to make is that Mr. Yago uh, represented that uh, correctly that Mr. Chirdo brought the concept of this uh, ordinance to the council and actually uh, invited the ordinance committee to become involved in it. And they, the ordinance committee, respectfully declined. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that this wasn't a valid ordinance that needed to be added to the books and unfortunately uh, Councilman Chirdo and others of us that felt that this was a, a meaningful addition to the code uh, were left to, to develop it on, on by themselves. So it's I think unfair to say that this was only done to serve the interests of Mr. Chirdo or Councilman Chirdo I think that's all that I really have to say on that point. And it, and it did have to go um, to the uh, planning board, which I do sit on, I'll be honest, I sit on the planning board. It did go to the planning board and every single member of the planning board has to review zoning ordinances, see whether they are in uh, compliance or non-compliance with our master plan. They all voted yes. Um, nobody had any questions, concerns, or, uh, or thought it was a, a poor decision. So another board and they're gonna keep that information. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so I need a a motion. Make a motion. Second. Karen, any roll call please? Councilman Yargo? No. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Navy? Yes. Councilman Russo? Nope. Councilman Sherdo? Yes. Councilman Frank. Yes. Okay. That's, that's done. Over here to ordinance 2-2024, an ordinance appealing or repealing and replacing section 110-14.1 of the chapter 110 of the Borough of Kinelon Code titled Violations and Penalties. This ordinance was introduced last at our meeting held on January 18th, 2024. Proper notice was published as required by law. A copy was posted on the municipal bulletin board and copies, additional copies were made available to the public. This is now open to the public. Was there anybody who would like to be, speak about ordinance 2-24? Who's your big chance? No? Okay, we're gonna close it to the public and we're now moving back to the dais. Does anybody on the council wish to speak at this time? Okay, here none. I'm looking for a motion to adopt Ordinance 2-24. So moved. I need a second. Okay, I need a roll call, please. Councilman Dago? Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Navy? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Carroll? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Okay. Uh, ordin ordinance number 3-2024, dash we already talked about. We're pushing that off to next month. Um, I do agree uh, with Councilman Yago that maybe we can put together a committee of three council people to sit with the uh, tax assessor while this is going on to make sure that we understand it as well as they understand it. So we'll talk, I'll pick 
couple guys out to, to uh, go to that meeting. Mr. Mayor, I, if you're looking for volunteers, I volunteer for that committee. Okay. I just need, uh, I'm Councilman Yago, yourself. I just need one other councilwoman or councilman that, that would like Council to do person. it. <laughs> I could do it. Cindy, okay, you're the you're the third. So when they, I'll have them get in touch with you guys, and you could just sit in on the meetings with them, just to make sure that we understand it as well as they do. Okay, thank you. All right, so ordinance number four 2024. It's an ordinance amending the revised general ordinances of the borough of Kinlan and creating a new chapter 155 titled "Privately Owned Salt Storage." <laughs> Motion to introduce. So moved. I need a second. A roll call, please. Councilman Yago? Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mabey? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Jarrow? Yes. Can you put garbage in that or just salt? <laughs> just salt. Just salt. Just salt. Yes. yes. Got to poison the uh, aquifer. Whereas the above warrants was introduced at this meeting held on March 21st, 2024, and read by title and passed on first reading. Now, therefore, be resolved. That at the regular meeting to be held on April 18th, 2024, at 7 p.m. prevailing time at the Kinlaw Municipal Building, this council will further consider for second reading and final passage of the said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk of this borough is hereby directed to publish proper notice thereof. Thank you. All right, now we're on to ordinance 5 2024. An ordinance replace. Er, Repealing and replacing section 148 of chapter 207 of the borough of Kinlon code titled permanently installed non-portable generators and air conditioning units. I need a motion to introduce. Second. 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 Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay, whereas the above ordinance was introduced at the meeting held on March 21st, 2024, and read by title and passed on first reading, now therefore be resolved that at the regular meeting to be held on April 18th, 2024, at 7 p.m. prevailing time at the Kinlaw Municipal Building, this council will further consider for second reading and final passage of this said ordinance, be it further resolved that the borough clerk of this borough is hereby directed to publish proper notice thereof. Getting closer. Okay, we have ordinance two more. Ordinance two, ordinance six dash twenty four, a bond ordinance appropriating one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and authorizing the issuance of one thousand. I'm sorry, one million six hundred fifty thousand of bonds or notes of the borough for various improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Borough of Kinelon in the County of Morris, New Jersey. I need a motion to introduce. Make a motion. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Councilman Yargo? Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mabey? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Jarrell? Yes. Councilman Mabey? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Yes. Okay, whereas the above warrants was introduced this meeting, held on March 21st and read by title and passed on first reading, now therefore be resolved that at the regular meeting to be held on April 18, 2024, at 7 p.m. prevailing time at the Kinelon Municipal Building, this council further consider for second reading and final passage of the said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk of this borough is hereby directed to publish proper notice thereof. Home stretch. Ordinance number 07. Vince, you were busy this busy month. Voice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, ordinance number 07, 2024, a bond ordinance appropriating $1,300,000 and authorizing the issuance of $1,235,000 bonds or notes of the borough for various road improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the borough of Kinlon in the county of Mars, New Jersey. I need a motion to introduce. Make a motion. Second. Okay, roll call. Councilman Yago? Yes. Councilman Harris? Yes. Councilman Mabey? Yes. Councilman Russo? Yes. Councilman Jarrell? Yes. Councilman Yes. Okay, whereas the above ordinance was introduced at this meeting held on March 21st, 2024, read by title, passed on first reading. Now, therefore, be resolved that the regular meeting to be held on April 18th, 2024, at 7 p.m. prevailing time. At the Kinelon Municipal Building, this council will further consider for second reading and final passage of the said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk of this borough is hereby directed to publish the proper notice thereof. 
I need a tax collector's report. Mayor, before you yes. get to that, um, I have two items for new business, if you, want, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, <laughs> you look like you're ready to cry. <laughs> um, one is um, some of the confusion that we had tonight over the ordinance, especially the one with the Lake Reality, is could we um, designate a spot on the borough website where we publish the introduced ordinances uh, so that members of the public, you know, it, it shouldn't go under ordinances because those are the ones that are passed. We yeah. should have a section. No, I agree. That says. That needs to be discussed with Jennifer Elmrath because she does the website. I don't know if they have a spot that they can put in there. All right, we can always discuss it. Yeah, I would just, I don't, we don't have a problem. I don't think everybody has a problem. I completely agree with that. More so when I was in the public asking for that, and you guys said we're not allowed to talk about introduced ordinances. You can't see it until it's. Yeah. No, it has to be introduced. You can publish it. Or it's introduced. That's what's being introduced. So, yeah, so once it's introduced, it should, I don't know why it's not on there. It should be on there, yes. It used to be on our old website. It's not on the new one. So you tell Jen and I'll tell her as well. One of us will remember. Okay. Mayor, the, the, um, the second thing I, I want to bring to your attention and to the council members' attention, we were a little bit remiss in um, our reorg meeting um, in establishing committees uh, of the council. Uh, Section 13-5 uh, in the bylaws States that council at its annual meeting shall establish for its members such committees of the council as will assist it in the ensuing year. And in uh, section C thereof, the um, list of committees that needs to be established, we did not establish the technology committee, nor did we establish the uh, utilities committee. And I would request that we establish uh, both of those committees. Reestablish. Well, reestablish the you know, according to according to the Bible. Yeah, I, I was under the assumption we were taking it out, but I don't think we ever did. Well, so. there was no... Um, yeah, there was no vote or anything. There was no vote or anything, and in order to remove those, we would have to pass an ordinance amending uh, these Bibles. Yeah, I'd be in favor to amending them so that utilities would go to DPW and then technology would be in the uh, borough administrator's role. That would be... That's what I would like to introduce. Yeah. What, well, why would we... Because the technology, the technology, technology the, the person that's here 24 7 managing the building um, should be responsible for the technology. I, I look at it as that's, that's his role when the phones go down, or, or if he's not here, Karen's here, call on the technology company. They are the ones that make the day to day decisions here. And they, as well they should. Yeah. But, but well, we'll, we'll put it yeah, again. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it at the work session. Yeah, and, let's talk about and, the work session, not. Yeah. not Deliver this. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point, but it's a work session point. I mean, I would, I would, yeah, we'll talk about the work session. In the meantime, if you have something that's the technology, I mean, you're more than welcome to talk to Tom. And I mean, if, okay. we, if we stay with that, I think you were the appointment for that originally, and then I we thought I thought you were eliminating this, so I took you off. Okay. So, but if you have any problems with Tom, you could talk to him as the chair of that committee. Until we, until we talk about it. Presumptive. Presumptive, yes. Presumptive. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Anything else, please? No. Okay, thank you. Um, tax collector's report and investment officer's report. Thank you. Uh, district school payment, I need a motion to pay $3,321,495, and don't forget the 67 cents. I need a motion. City, you make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. <laughs> Second? Second. Okay, a roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 Got a vote. Aye. What's a vote? There's yeah. money. Yeah, I have a vote. Councilman Yarbrough? Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Mayor, um, I'm sorry. This, this, that just triggered a, 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 another thing that I had in mind. When we post the um, 
the ordinance, the past ordinances on the website, could we make sure that we have A, the date that it was adopted, and B, the roll call vote for the ordinance? We should, as a public record, we should show yeah. what the, uh, what the county council voted on every ordinance. I don't see any reason why not. I just don't know where it would go. Well, there's, I mean, you know, there's like a little, you could have a little Oh, little like a scan of, the yeah, yeah, scan, so yeah. Yeah, a little box on the bottom that just says, you know, yays and nays and shows who yep. did it. Yep, yep. Oh, no problem. So we can talk about it the at workshop. the workshop. <laughs> but I would do it, right move it forward. Okay, so now I have appointments, uh, Madeline... Florio, Christopher Lana, and Ronald Reckler for SOSAC, and Robert Heckler, Burge Fertigam. I hope I didn't mess that up. Uh, I think he's a doctor as well, so Dr. Fertigam, and Ronald Reckler, Board of Health. Do I have a motion to approve? Make a motion. Second. Roll call, or all no, in favor? You can do all in favor. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone against? I want to welcome Robert Heckler and Ronald Reckler to our Board of Health. Good luck with that, Jack. <laughs> All right, does anybody else want to bring anything in front of this council? We'd like to say we love our police. Glenn Sisko, motion to adjourn. Anyone? All right, second. Meeting's adjourned. Go Colts. <laughs> Reckler Heckler. <laughs> oh, they do good. <laughs> I'm Vinny's wife's sister. Yeah.